Sub YouTube, it's Michael, and today we're going to look at 50 of the greatest fashion pieces that I found in 2021. Really, just last week, but that's really not what we're focusing on. We don't have a lot of time to waste. It's also Christmas Eve, so I gotta get this video out before Santa comes and I ruin Christmas once again. But, let's rage. I wonder if, uh, if the pond iced over yet for Christmas. It's a very special time on Cape Cod when people are skating. Oh, no, I guess it didn't. First things first, I think we'll go over bags just because I don't really talk about bags too much. Gucci is on this list, which I thought was weird and that none of you people would like, but is true, so we have to talk about it. Patagonia Black Hole Duffel Bag 55 Liter. I've seen a few of these in real life and they're just tanks and beautifully constructed. They're very cool, very tough, and they just don't seem like they can get ripped up. Then I started to go down the rabbit hole and there's gonna be a lot of this collaboration on this list today, but the Todd Snyder X LL Bean tote bags, boat and tote bags from L.L. Bean, but there are a lot of really cool vintage L.L. Bean totes on eBay too, so always watch out for those. Then finally, this is where things get bougie, but I found some great alternatives on eBay again, but wow, I'm, my rocks, I mean my knees are on rocks, so that's why I keep falling over. It's like doubling over in pain. But when I was in Miami for work, I saw this guy rocking this tote bag, and this is a Goyard tote bag, which I never usually like this stuff because it's very, very overpriced for the leather quality, and a lot of this actually is coated canvas, so it's canvas with a PVC coating over it, so it peels off, it's not leather. I saw this guy with this tote bag, and I was like, that bag is gorgeous, wow, I really think I want, I think for Christmas I want that Goyard tote bag. And Louis Vuitton got very famous because of the chest that they used to make. A Louis Vuitton chest is the original old money Servants carried this chest around for me while I traveled the world type deal and people carry them on steamships and stuff like that when steamships were also very luxurious. So I started looking at Louis Vuitton. Then I went to Gucci and I saw this which is insanely, I think it's really pretty and it's really ingenuitive where there's like a separate bag strapped down, but it's like a $5,000 bag. So I was like, well, that certainly won't do. And then I ended up looking at a brand called Hartman, vintage Hartman luggage. It's beautiful and I really like it and I really like this duffel bag, Hartman Wings, if you want to get the coated canvas look. And that I thought would be pretty cool. And then I saw this cool L.O. Bean bag and of course there's Filson and these, all these other tough brands, but I think I'm gonna get Hartman or this vintage Brook Brothers bag, which was also really cool. I started off wearing graphic t-shirts and then when I got more into fashion, I said graphic t-shirts are for babies. And then as I got more into fashion, I was like, okay, you can sometimes wear a graphic t-shirt and it will look cool. You just have to do it right. There are these two shirts from Freewheelers, which I thought were really cool. They are three quarter length, so they only hit your like lower elbow. Also, Emo Jean and Willie has some of the best cool like retro age shirts or like cool images on their shirts, so definitely them. And then Studio Dardison has these really cool like very light color fox fiber shirts as well. I like all of those. If you have, know of any brands that make basically t-shirts like Emoji and Willy or Free Wheelers or anything, and they're nice quality, let me know. Also, there's a company called Just OK Co. Incredible designer. We're actually not even gonna move locations because that was such, such a short segment. So we're just gonna go this way. And you can see now the hidden danger of this video is that I've been standing on train track. My friend Brendan and I have a joke that you can't be mean in mittens. Like if you're trying to cross the road and someone cuts you off in mittens, are you just gonna be like, hey, or slow, actually. There's this Instagram, I forget who the name is, I'll put it right here. They have an incredible Instagram and the model, every piece of clothing fits him really well, but he wore Orslo 107 Ivy Fit Selvage denim. And I like them, I thought they were cool. I don't know why I forgot to do a transition, but next pair. I already have sweatpants that I got last year, so these are kind of redundant, but Champion Life Reverse Weave Men's Activewear. You probably want to go reverse weave, because that is their best quality sweats. Full count, so this is just raw denim again, but this is a slim straight fit. Full count 110SR, aka Super Rough Jeans. Thought those were pretty dope. Then, I don't know what pants, but some pants from a brand called Stan Ray. They are, I'm seeing them more and more as the straight fit comes back in but I really like all the stuff they have to offer, and it's cool, they have like the original painter's pants. Then we get into double RL, and this is why I'm saying price is made up in this video, I'm not buying all this stuff, because double RL is, makes very cool stuff, they have very cool distressing, 
but they're very expensive. But this is their plaid Jaspi twill pants with those front pockets on the side. Love those. I think those are a really cool blend of modern and heritage. And then again, double RL, they have a corduroy cargo pant, which is all the rage right now. Cargo pants are very in, even though um, back in middle school, I got made fun of for wearing cargo pants. Now they're cool. Thanks guys. And then finally, Orslo again, their boba fleece pants. This year, I'm trying to make a really big effort to look more comfy. The clothes that I like are heritage wear, which usually look like work wear, so they don't look cozy. That's why I'm trying to get into fleece. Like the risk here, obviously, is that I fall into the water and for some reason I can't get up and I drown or freeze to death. But if investigators came, they would be like, play the footage and then they'd watch the footage and they'd be like, oh my God, he just fell in. Anyways, at least they'd know what I recommend they get for cool clothing brands. I highly doubt you can see me. Okay, so first things first, Todd Snyder again. This is Todd Snyder collaborates. I just like his designs a lot, but he did a collaboration with Champion. So he has really cool sweaters there or sweatshirts, I should say. Then Emojin and Willie again, you can see I need to branch out my brands, but they make a zip up hoodie with a 30 ounce terry cloth weight. That is the secret to Emojin and Willie is they have incredibly heavy weighted materials that they don't really even brag about, but 30 ounces is beefy, so I would love to get that. Double RL again, the Patchwork Work Shirt Sweater, $1,600. Then, this is the piece from Ella Bean and Todd Snyder that is gorgeous. It's very reminiscent of the 50s or like early collegiate day cardigans, but it's Ella Bean, the cool checker plaid with the white in front. Then, this is the one that may not make sense. Saturdays, New York City. Not, they're not really known for their incredibly high quality garments. They have a jacket that I really like too, a red one that I think is just beautiful. But I really like how they just use a simple font on their shirt. And the fact that it's not contrast stitched or anything, I just feel like it would be really cozy, like with the champion sweats in my Brooklyn apartment, like making breakfast in the morning. Okay, so the last sweater in this list is from a company called Anderson Anderson, and it's over $500 for this. By Anderson Anderson is made in a full cardigan stitch, heavyweight, five gauge, 100% new merino wool knit with exclusively developed long fiber extra spun yarn. I did not know where to put this stuff. And they're very different things, actually. They're polar opposites. First one is the De Bonne Facture. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I wanna put heritage wear into my outfits, but not center my entire outfit around it. And that brings us to the L.O. Bean, again, and Todd Snyder collaboration fleece jacket, high pile fleece. I love fleece. I've said it a few times in this video already. I just overlooked fleece because it didn't really go with my aesthetic and now it's just amazing. I was on forums last night over Christmas break. Oh, this is not a Christmas video. For hours yesterday, just reading about people arguing about how effective fleece is compared to wool and lofted wool and how wool's main benefits are compared to cotton and they're not compared to fleece. So saying that it holds heat like three or four times better than wet garments is in reference to cotton, which is not fleece and fleece dries faster, but you Stuff like that. Shoes, sneakers, boots. First up, we have some sneakers. These are Onitsuka Tiger Horizonia Brown and Yellow. Also, I just, I looked at them again and I was like, oh, okay, so these or Asics. Then again, sorry, I just seem to really like Todd Snyder's clothes. I think him and I would really vibe. L.O. Bean x Todd Snyder. Bean boots, I have bean boots on right now actually, and I really like Bean Boots, but at the same time, I just hate them. But I think Todd Snyder's collaboration is off the chain. And then we get into Yucatan. Yucatan is one of my favorite shoe boot brands ever. I don't have anything from them, but I just think the design looks incredible. So really, I recommend anything Yucatan. They have made to order and ready to wear. But I said the Bletcher with the camp sole, the English mock, and then they have their main guide 6i DB boots off the chain hook. You know what I'm saying? Okay, these next sneakers are pretty interesting because I don't know if I think they are super ugly or cool looking, but they're from Moonstar and Moonstar. I look at them, they're the vulcanized rubber shoe. They're very, very similar to Converse, or actually they're more similar to PF Flyers. They look very similar, but this pair, the all weather pair, it's pretty cool. It's obviously, it's more water repellent and stuff because the actual rubber goes higher up on the canvas, but I just think it's a unique look. It looks like, um, you know, like a strawberry dipped in chocolate. And then to wrap up everything, I really want a pair of Doc Martens actually, but not boots, I don't think. I have to check to see if Solivare, the original makers of Doc Martens that make their boots Goodyear welted, have these, but the actual 
Derby sneaker, I think that's a really cool look. So that is definitely on my list. Isn't it weird to think? It's freezing outside. And those little guys have down, just like a down jacket, under their feathers that's keeping them warm. They're, see ya. I have jackets. I've had many jackets. But I don't have a winter jacket that I really like. This is not that video, but these are some jackets that I saw and that I like and that I think you would like. So the finale of the list is here. My mouth is basically frozen and not moving correctly, but here is the list. Oh, first thing on the list is actually not even a jacket. It is a vintage L.L. Bean vest. I would love to wear a red vest or an orange vest like over this outfit. I think that'd be pretty cool. Of course, you probably know this already. Filson, the Mackinac cape coat. I went to Filson recently, tried one on. Not a cape coat, actually, just a single Mac. It's not exactly what I want for my winter jacket, but we'll get into that in the next video where I do a tier list. This is the Taylor Stitch Whitney Parka. This is an interesting jacket because Taylor Stitch did their own review about it, and I thought it was going to be a really heavy winter parka, but the review that they wrote themselves said that it's not a very heavy winter parka. And I was like, oh, well, that's actually not what I want then. This is a masterpiece, again, from RRL. This is a corduroy pea coat. It's not really a winter jacket at all. It's probably fall, and then you have to layer a ton. But it is just gorgeous. Holy Toledo. Miss Ohio. Then we go into eBay. eBay, there are some things right now that if I mention them, you may snap them up, and I'm going to take that risk. But first thing is, B6 bombers from Averex company are great. They are like B3 bombers, except slim down and trimmer and less ostentatious. Then also on eBay are Woolrich Mackinac, well, essentially Mackinac cruiser jackets from the brand Woolrich. Instead, I really like them. And there's this one example that's red with patches on it that I love, but it's overpriced. Then we look at the headquarters jacket by Mr. Freedom. This is a very cool varsity jacket. It's kind of BA, if you know what I'm saying. Speaking of varsity jackets, we hop over to DHEN 1920 in their collaboration with uh, Division Road and their Winston jacket. And this is an interesting one. I forget the exact name and my hands are too cold to be on my phone, but Eddie Bauer designed the original down coat and actually he did that because he almost died wearing a wool coat because it was too heavy so he wanted something lighter but it was too he, he didn't die because it was so heavy he died because it was so heavy that he took it off I believe or something along those lines the first down coat that he invented looked like this and it's actually one of my favorite styles of down coat so I kind of want to get something like that or he didn't actually invent it I think he took it from sailors in Japan or something like that so Credit doesn't go to Eddie Bauer for designing it, but for distributing it. Then, finally, the tale of Best Made, the company, is an interesting one. As I have said before, they once had a ton of beautiful clothes with very, very high price points. Now, they still have most of their beautiful clothes with price points that are way cheaper, like a third of the price that they used to be. So, their 3L down parka looks amazing. It has 800, I think, fill power, which is a very high fill power. So this is a very warm jacket because there's a lot of down in it too. So this is a beast of a jacket that typically goes for like $1,200. But from since they got bought out by Duluth, I know they obviously put construction overseas, but it's a very cheap jacket for what you're getting either way. Even from North Face and Patagonia, their highest model lines are like $800, $700, and they have similar stats. So I really don't know where quality is getting taken away besides they're changing the location that it was manufactured in. But that doesn't necessarily mean less quality, it just means the labor's cheaper, which hopefully practice is good. Other than that though, it has been a lovely year with all of you people watching The Iron Snail, and um, I hope to see you next year, aka next week or the week after that, and we will continue. Big plans for The Iron Snail coming up. Hopefully there will be some jackets and jeans released under the name The Iron Snail, and um, I will keep experimenting with formats and figure out how to get more people, hopefully, to join us on our path to destroy the world.